the Pratt & Whitney J-58 turbojet powered one of the most iconic aircraft in the world. Designed in the late 50s, the original variant faced conventional jet engine limitations above Mach 2, such as high inlet and exhaust temperatures along with an inbound shockwave. Just like any other turbojet, air runs through a compressor, is combusted, and this drives a turbine. An afterburner can also be added for extra speed, but this utilizes a lot more fuel and cannot sustain high speeds for long periods of time. So a different design was utilized in the J-58. This is where the bypass tubes come into play, essentially transforming the jet into a hybrid turbo ramjet. Once over Mach 2.2, the ramjet utilizes forward motion of the aircraft to take air in for combustion. The forward inlet also controls the shockwave to keep it outside of the compressor. Furthermore, the engine can also expand over 6 inches at cruising speed. So, special alloys had to be used to prevent the casing from blowing apart. This higher supersonic temperature also meant that a new jet fuel had to be developed with low vapor pressure. This problematic fuel combusted above minus 5 degrees Celsius, so a nitrogen tank had to carry the fuel. Ultimately, designing a Mach 3 engine is very challenging, and was very impressive in the late 1950s. The question is whether or not we can develop a hypersonic engine which can go beyond Mach 5 at sustained speeds. The Ironically, the X-15 demoed as a hypersonic rocket aircraft around the same time that the SR-71 was being developed. Launched from a B-52, the X-15 was not completely self-sufficient and it did not reach orbital speeds. 20 years later and the space shuttle completed orbital launches with rocket propulsion. It could carry 26 tons into low Earth orbit with two added boosters and a very large fuel tank, making it to be a partially reusable launch vehicle. The ideal solution would be to utilize the oxidizer from the incoming air, and this would save a lot of weight and make it a fully reusable system. The Sabre from Reaction Engines is currently a prototype being developed to handle these higher temperatures coming in, and rapidly cool it down within a fraction of a second. Combined with an inlet, this would allow a turbine to run up to Mach 5 without completely melting it down. But the air could also be used as an oxidizer for the secondary rocket phase. This indeed would be a very balanced calculation, as it would only work in lower altitudes, but it could also minimize the size of the fuel tank. The key to all this is the precooler, and it's a very challenging component to build to say the least, as helium goes through 16,000 tubes, and if it stops flowing or bridges off the air, then this could lead to a catastrophic failure. Ultimately, the Sabre is one of the most advanced ideas when it comes to hypersonic engines. But the concept is brilliant, because you could utilize the precooler without a rocket propulsion system and still achieve a higher Mach speed. Another type of engine which can obtain hypersonic speed is the scramjet. There are no moving parts, and they only feature an inlet chamber and injector. They're a little bit different from ramjets because they can utilize supersonic incoming air, so they can go up to Mach 15. But the downside is, is that they don't have a compressor or turbine, so they don't work at a standstill, and they require supersonic speeds. The X-43 was an unmanned testbed for the scramjet engine. Unlike rockets, the vehicle did not need oxygen and was primarily fueled by hydrogen. Consequently, it went faster than the X-15, topping at Mach 10 speeds. Today, companies like Hypersonics and Aerojet Rocketdyne are working on scramjet technology. But since the engine requires incoming supersonic air, it will need a hybrid system to be utilized in reusable vehicles. The ramjet is still one of the ideal variants when it comes to hybrid vehicles. Because unlike scramjets, the intake air is still restrained at subsonic speeds, so it could be utilized with a turbine with less complexity. With a low starting range of around Mach 0.5, it could theoretically be configured with many different aerospace jet engines, maybe even electric propulsion. The SR-71 already showed us that it is possible to incorporate a hybrid ramjet propulsion system. Now there are many projects which will replicate the J-58, Hermes is still one of the frontrunners as they have shown considerable progress in their Chimera prototypes. The Chimera 2 is basically an F-100 with 29,000 pounds of thrust with an in-house developed ramjet. The larger engine will be utilized in the Dark Horse, and their goal is to eventually develop a 20-passenger Halcyon. Once again, we are starting to see bold concepts emerge which utilize additive manufacturing. Combined with simulation and AI algorithms, we are starting to see a new generation of engines emerge. Velo3D recently revealed an Inconel 718 solid piece ramjet. 
This type of alloy is very comparable to titanium, with high strength and temperature properties. It consolidates a spike, heat exchanger, flame holder, and fuel injectors into one piece. This minimizes vibrations and supersonic flow. There's also research being done on morphable ramjet technology, so there's still a lot of ways to go to make this engine even more efficient. So we definitely know how to achieve hypersonic flight. We have seen ramjet, scramjet technology, and even rocket propulsion. There's also the question whether or not you can use a pre-cooler to drive a turbine at higher speeds. Ironically, we know that the SR-72 is going to come out in the next couple of years, and there are claims that it will utilize a similar system as the SR-71 with higher speeds. But there are also different projects which are attempting to commercialize this for passenger flight, and that's very complex because, like the Concorde, these will be limited to probably over ocean flights because of the sonic boom. There are interesting parallel developments such as the X-59 and X-B1 which are attempting to research on how to mitigate the sonic boom, but I think that commercial flight will be very limited in the near future. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all these different propulsion systems. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.